Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. Till now in the course uh, we have uh, seen how to analyze a power electronic converter from the perspective of design. How do you calculate uh, the different inductors and capacitor values uh, that uh, are required in your converter. Then now uh, we also saw what are the different uh, semiconductor devices, how do you select them, what are the specifications that you should look for in the data sheet. Further uh, we saw how to design snubbers, what are drivers, what are the different type of driver circuits that uh, you may choose to drive your power semiconductor devices. Then uh, we further saw how to do thermal design that means how do you select the heat sinks. Then we also saw how to do magnetics design that means inductors and transformers uh, for your power electronic converters, uh, how you can design them. Further we saw the EMI, um, what is EMI, I gave you an introduction to electromagnetic interference problems and what could be the possible solutions from the perspective of power electronics engineer. And I also briefly introduced to EMI filters. Now uh, having uh, discussed all these things, now let us look into how do you combine all these things and finally design the hardware for the power electronic converter. So for that first uh, let us look into different sections a power converter may be having. So when you would like to design a power electronic converter as a first time designer you will be usually designing the prototype. So it is a prototype which is uh, designed first then tested and uh, then further based on the experimental performance then uh, usually another iteration of the prototype may be done. So it is like uh, one or two iterations that may be doing and then finally it may be translated into product also. So uh, this is a course uh, uh, which has been designed from the perspective of a person who is a beginner in design of power electronic converters. So uh, at first uh, you would like to design a prototype of the converters that you have studied before or which you will need for any particular application of yours. So you would uh, be having targets of uh, building prototypes uh, something like this uh, pictures which are uh, shown here. So this is a prototype of uh, of a three phase inverter. You can see here that it has been built uh, just using one single module of uh, IGBT. Then uh, this is a very small prototype of a boost converter. Then uh, these are prototypes of uh, other converters. Uh, I would not name them because we have not uh, discussed uh, this in those in the course. So, but there are various different types of power electronic converters and whatever we have uh, studied in this course you can apply those theory for building up those power electronic converters apart from the edge bridge and buck converter which we have been using as an example to explain the uh, design concepts. So now uh, to know what are the usually the different sections in power converter. I am going to uh, take an example a very very simple example of a buck converter design. So here I have shown one schematic. So this schematic uh, let us see what all things uh, that are there in it. So first of all you can see here this is the buck converter the buck converter circuit. Your uh, L and C of the buck converter this is the diode and uh, then this is the MOSFET. Now further what all other things that we see here this one is a driver this is a driver IC so this is an optocoupler based uh, gate driver uh, which is uh, put here and as you can see here uh, this one is connected through this gate resistor through the gate of this MOSFET. And uh, one terminal over here is uh, going to be connected to the source of the MOSFET. 
Further what we see here is that this is a power supply IC. Now this DC to DC converter IC provides the uh, power supply for this gate driver. So, this gives a plus 15 and minus 7 with respect to this source point. So, over here this is the source. So, this point is the source which is connected to a one uh, to the reference of this DC to DC converter. So, this one is the isolated power supply for gate drive and uh, this is uh, with respect to the source. Then further what uh, we see here is that the input the uh, that means your PWM pulses those PWM pulses uh, they are coming from here this is a from this IC this is a microcontroller IC. So, this one is a microcontroller which is uh, uh, going to generate the PWM pulses. Now, here the reference as you can see that is with respect to the ground or the reference of this microcontroller IC and here on this side the reference is the source of the MOSFET. Then further what we see here these ones are the snubbers. So, simple RC snubbers are uh, chosen here. Here also for the diode we see that uh, RC snubber is, is chosen. Then uh, what we see here are your heat sinks. One heat sink is for this MOSFET. So, this one is for the MOSFET and this heat sink is for this diode. Then further what we see here is an EMI filter which is going to be connected at the input of this buck converter. That means uh, whatever is the EMI that is uh, generated by this buck converter to stop that going to the source here an EMI filter is put. Then further here uh, we have a fuse for protection and now this is a potential divider arrangement that is done here that means the uh, resistances are put and then there is a potential divider that is created out of it. And then what we see here these two points are brought out and here what you see is a differential amplifier. So, this is a differential amplifier Now, here in this uh, differential amplifier what it is doing is that it is sensing these this voltage that is the output voltage. So, here this is your output voltage V O. So, to sense that that a part of the voltage using the potential divider is given to this differential amplifier which uses this op amp. Then the output of it is a level shifted. So, this is a level shifter circuit that you observe here which has also been created um, using op amps and resistors and in between you also see a simple RC filter or no some noise filtering that is being done here a low pass filter. And uh, this output of it that means this is your sensed voltage. So, this is your V sense or uh, of the output of a VO. So, that output then from here, so that output from here goes to one of the analog inputs of this microcontroller and uh, this is uh, also with reference to the to the common of the microcontroller. Now, 
Here this microcontroller what it does is this that it forms a closed loop control that means it senses this voltage. It reads this voltage uh, through this analog input and it has got inbuilt ADC that is your analog to digital converter. And then uh, you can program what is the output uh, reference that you need and then uh, you can have different types of controllers programmed in the mic inside the microcontroller and then uh, it can do the comparison uh, with the reference and it can generate the PWM. So, that is the PWM output that is going to come through it and then it has to go through the gate driver circuit and then it drives this MOSFET. And further what we see here on uh, this side, this are your uh, uh, power supply ICs. So, all these three that you see here, this one and also uh, this one, these are your power supply ICs and these give the supply to this op amps and also to the microcontroller. So, um, it is a supply for all these um, ICs which are either doing either performing some digital control or they are doing some sensing or level shifting or any other uh, miscellaneous uh, component that may be there which requires some supply. So, for that uh, different power supply ICs uh, can be put and that is what those three are shown here. So, this gives your VDD. So, this VDD goes here to the microcontroller this power supply IC. Then this power supply IC gives the output as uh, plus Vs and minus Vs which goes to these two op amps. And then this power supply IC gives the voltage level of V level. So, that is what is the V level is given to this level shifter circuit. Now, all these uh, three ICs they also require their own power supply that means there is some voltage input voltage has to be given to them. So, that is that input uh, which is shown here V plus and V minus and that V plus V minus as goes acts as an input to all these three power supply ICs. Further this V plus and V minus this is also the input of this powers isolated power supply IC which is used here to supply the optocoupler based gate driver. So, uh, that is what uh, can be there in this PCB. Now, this can be inside one single PCB or multiple PCBs. Now, this is a very simple circuit. So, this all these things can be inside one uh, printed circuit board, but uh, if you have a big converter, big power electronic converter or the rating is high then multiple PCBs also can be used uh, for making different different parts of the circuit in different different PCBs. Now, further uh, this uh, V plus and V minus uh, which is giving supply to different different power supply ICs, this uh, V plus V minus uh, this voltage source can uh, be taken obtained from uh, this input voltage itself this input to V in itself um, can be stepped down and uh, then that can be given to this uh, V plus and uh, V minus. Else we can also have some other source uh, single phase source from which you can have some adapter and then also you can obtain V plus V minus. So, that there can be different ways of obtaining this uh, V plus and V minus that is shown here. Now, uh, then further uh, this entire all these heat sinks, HEMI filters and all these things then has to be put inside an enclosure. Now, here uh, just for the sake of representation I have shown this um, uh, shown the enclosure with this uh, grey colored box. So, this uh, represents the enclosure. Enclosure means the box inside which you are going to put everything and then finally that, that is what your converter uh, that is going to be. 
and then you can also have different uh, screws that may be fixed to the enclosure via which your PCBs or all other your inductors and it seems different components uh, in your converter may be fixed to the uh, enclosure. So, those are represented uh, here by this, uh, this circle the, this brown color circle that you see here. Now, uh, this is uh, this schematic I have shown you is uh, to explain you the different sections that are there in a power converter. Now, let us look into one by one what uh, are the different sections which we can divide it into this schematic and based on accordingly uh, for any power electronic converter that you have to design what could be the different sections because if you have uh, to uh, design the converter and if you think in terms of different different sections then it becomes uh, simpler you will have ease in thinking um, and understanding what are different components or circuits um, uh, that you require for your full converter. So, first of all is the power electronic section. So, power electronic section means that is your uh, this, uh, this box that I have drawn here that one that contains your power electronic circuit. So, power electronic circuit here is uh, this thing this one this buck converter familiar circuit that is your power electronic circuit that is part of the power electronic section. Plus this uh, driver section your gate drivers that that is a part of the power electronic section because you have to drive the devices. Now you may think of the driver as a separate section also if you have a big converter you have several devices to uh, which you have to drive let us say you have 6 devices to in which you need to drive or 9 devices or 18 devices or more than that then you can also think of driver as a different section. So, a uh, driver could also be taken as a part of the power electronic section plus uh, these uh, snubbers uh, that are shown here that is a part of the power electronic circuit itself. So, uh, those also you can categorize as the part of the power electronic section and uh, plus the overcurrent protection which is your fuse or some other uh, protection circuit which you may be uh, attaching or adding to the power electronic uh, circuit. So, those uh, will be part of your power electronic section. So, uh, inductors, transformers, uh, whatever magnetics you have uh, designing or uh, these large capacitors, DC bus capacitors or big AC filter capacitors. So, those will, are going to be part of your power electronic section means power electronic section means more or uh, less there is the power electronic circuit, uh, your basic protection uh, circuits and the uh, driver circuit that also if you wish to add in the power electronic section that forms the power electronic section of the power converter. Then next important section is the controller. So, whatever power electronic circuit you have you have to drive it you have to provide the gate pulses to the power electronic uh, devices. So, those gate pulses uh, have to be generated and uh, there are two ways by which they can be generated either you can use an analog control or you can use a digital control. So, analog control means you will be using op amps or different uh, analog circuits of which uh, then um, you uh, will be comparing the uh, either the reference uh, I mean a DC reference uh, with the triangular carrier or a sawtooth carrier or uh, it will be comparing usually a sinusoidal reference uh, with your triangular or sawtooth carrier. So, this entire thing can be implemented using analog ICs, analog electronic ICs uh, that can be implemented or we can use uh, digital ICs, digital method that means you can use microcontrollers or DSPs that is your digital signal processors or FPGAs also. So, here uh, uh, what I have shown here in this example is a PWM controller IC. So, that is a digital control IC that is shown, digital control method which is shown here. Now, 
uh, also know that that these ones, these digital controllers, uh, they will be mostly working at either 3.3 volt or 5 volt or sometimes even below than that, below 3.3 volt also. So, uh, that voltage uh, then has uh, to be provided to those ICs and that is why it is important of uh, importance of these power supply ICs which I just uh, uh, told you um, a while ago. And further in this digital control means when you are uh, programming it, you can also program filters in it because whatever inputs that are going to the controller that may be having some noise in it as you would like to filter out the noise. So, for example, here uh, if you see uh, this one uh, whatever uh, this uh, sensed signal is coming which is going to this uh, microcontroller. Now, further we can have an ADC inside it analog to digital converter. So, uh, after that uh, if this signal let us say the signal was supposed to be like this the sensed uh, signal and uh, it, it, it has uh, some noise in it. So, that noise this noise you would like to filter out. Now, one way of uh, filtering it is, uh, is that you put some filtering analog filtering circuits here or that means some hardware uh, filtering you can do or uh, inside this program that you will be writing in the microcontroller um, uh, you can program a filter. So, that will also filter out the noise. So, noise filters can also be programmed inside the digital controllers uh, apart from the main control program that you will have to uh, uh, write. So, controller is another section of the power converter. Further, we will have sensing circuit. So, that means uh, sensing is another section of a power converter. So, what do we see here? This is the potential divider which is created to sense the voltage and then a uh, differential amplifier which is used. To, so, this is the sensing circuit. So, this is a voltage sensing circuit. So, that is the section which is your uh, sensing circuit section which is uh, shown over here. Apart from that when you have a converter then you may like to also sense the current. Now, current sensing in, um, uh, can be done using holific sensors and also many times uh, they are uh, done using your uh, 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 current sensing resistors. So, if we uh, have these kind of current sensors which is uh, uh, which are also called as your LEM sensors. Uh, so, then what happens is that here what the current the main current power uh, circuit current that flows through it and based on it uh, this sensor. Uh, uh, gives a voltage an output voltage with respect to its uh, reference and this is basically the reference of the, the control circuit or the sensing circuit. And you also have to give uh, some supply voltage uh, to this current sensor and this current sensor what should be the supply voltage that will be given in the data sheet of that uh, current sensor. And uh, then further whatever is this voltage coming that uh, may be very small or more uh, which may which you might have to again scale up or scale down uh, amplify or reduce uh, based on uh, your which that is what which becomes compatible to your controller. So, that is what you may um, be having some uh, op amp circuit after the current sensor this circuit that output voltage it gives. Or another method of sensing the current is uh, this current sensing resistor. So, wherever you want to sense the current in series with that you can put a small resistor. Now, this resistor will be of a very very small value so that it is it does not become lossy it does uh, it is not going to affect the efficiency of the converter much. And then uh, that uh, he after that whatever this voltage that comes here that uh, we can uh, uh, let it go through a differential amplifier 
and then whatever is the output voltage then that can be given to the controller. So, these two are common methods of sensing current and voltage sensing I showed you you can have a potential divider and then you can use a differential amplifier and there are also uh, special voltage sensors uh, which are which gives you electrical isolation uh, as well. So, those type of sensors voltage sensors are also uh, there and the, you can also use that. And uh, when you have the sensing circuits know that the sensing sensors have got their own delays. So, um, here in this case whatever is the input uh, signal here the current that is coming and uh, what you obtain the output here the output voltage which is uh, corresponding to this input, uh, input current there may be a delay in it. So, let us say if this is the current I if that you wish to sense and the voltage that you may be sensing may be slightly delayed from there. So, that will be your uh, this if we call it as a V sense. So, this V sense is going to be delayed uh, with respect to the current that you are going to sense. So, this delay is part of uh, any quantity which you are going to sense. So, you should keep in mind whatever sensors that you are choosing that uh, should be uh, giving you as less delay as possible or at least a delay which is affordable for by your controller. Then temperature sensing uh, that is you can use thermocouplers or thermistors. Uh, for temperature sensing and uh, there could be other types of sensings also present in a power converter depending on the application. So, uh, in short the sensing is another section of a power converter. Then your interfacing circuit. Now, what is an interfacing circuit? Interfacing means you have to interface between two different sections and usually what is the interface between? The interface is between something like you are sensing it uh, whatever output you have got and then you have a controller and you have to interface between the two that means you have to match the voltages uh, in between them means your uh, output of the sensor um, is let us say giving uh, with the respect to um, your 15 volt and your controller accepts voltages uh, of the range of 3.3 volts. So, you have to scale down then. So, uh, that is the interfacing that you have to do. You have to do some uh, signal processing there. You might also have to filter out some noise there. So, that is the signal processing and the interfacing that is required at, at that side. Further interfacing is required whatever the controller the output it is giving the PWM gate pulses that it is providing and uh, when you have to give it to the driver they those voltages also have to be matching. So, there also further interfacing is needed. So, here let us understand uh, what is the interfacing that is being shown here in this example. So, here what you see? this is here what where you get the output of the sensor the voltage sensor voltage sensing circuit and uh, uh, now this is going to give you both plus and minus voltages whereas uh, this PWM controller this microcontroller this only accepts voltages which are positive with respect to its uh, common or the reference. So, we have to do the level shifting. So, that is why this is the level shifting circuit that is used here this level shifter. So, this acts as an interface between this uh, voltage sensing circuit and uh, this uh, digital controller or the PWM controller the microcontroller. And uh, uh, now here this is very simple uh, thing that is uh, shown. Apart from that in the interfacing we can have another other signal processing also like we can put filters as I said like they can be hardware filter analog filters or what you call as active filters. It is like uh, one which is uh, shown here. So, this is uh, the diagram of your saline key filter 
which you may be familiar with. If you are not, uh, you may read it uh, um, on your own also. So, uh, this is OPAMP based filter and uh, you can have different RCs uh, put in these places of Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4. So, create it to filter out the noise that may be present in the sensed voltages. So, signal processing of output of sensing circuits and active filters like cell and key filters for eliminating noise. And I also told you about the voltage level shifting and the DC bias that uh, 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 might have to be given based on the output of the sensed voltage and uh, what the controller accepts, the level of the voltages that the controller accepts. And uh, further uh, uh, your buffer between sensing circuit and controller. S sometimes we want to give a buffer as well. Now, what is this uh, buffer uh, that uh, we are talking about here? So, these uh, controllers, now here uh, this is a digital controller that is shown here. You might have analog control also. So, most of the time when you have these kind of controllers, uh, their current capacity may be very small. So, we have to ensure that we, we are not drawing any current to the pin to which it is connected. So, uh, they, so, we want to ensure uh, that um, um, uh, I mean the impedances uh, should be such that we are not uh, drawing current from the controller. So, there we want to keep the impedances high. So, for that also buffer are many times put between the sensing circuit and the controller and similarly we want to have buffers over here as well. So, a uh, one is your uh, interfacing over here between sensor and controller and second uh, as I told you it is a buffer between your uh, level shifting and buffer that is required between the output of the controller these digital controller and uh, uh, your gate driving. Now, here this is uh, directly connected to the optocoupler based uh, uh, gate driver. But uh, many times it may happen that this voltage over here, this can be in the range of uh, plus 5 volt or uh, plus 15 volt is what uh, these um, gate driver circuits may demand. Uh, where is your uh, this uh, uh, digital controller? That uh, may be giving output uh, also of the level of 3.3 uh, volt. So, uh, then you will have to do a level shifting the same PWM pulse. So, here uh, whatever PWM pulse if it was coming in the range of uh, 0 to 3.3 volt you have to do the level shifting and you have to make it uh, from 0 to 15 volt or 5 volt whatever as it is required by this gate driver. So, that level shifting has to be done. So, for that level shifting this kind of uh, ICs are uh, used. So, uh, these are your uh, level shifter ICs or uh, buffer ICs. So, this, so, this can be inverting or non-inverting. So, uh, here you can see that uh, this is a non-inverting level shifter that is uh, shown here. So, they provide both level shifting as well as buffer that means they give high impedance uh, provide so that uh, we are not overloading the, uh, the microcontroller. And apart from that in the interfacing we might have some logic gates also AND gates, NOT gates uh, whatever different types of such simple digital uh, logic circuits might also be present in the interfacing circuit. So, interfacing circuit contains many miscellaneous circuits that you require be usually between your driver and uh, uh, the controller, controller means here the microcontroller or the DSP or the FPGA or the between the sensed output and uh, your controller. So, various miscellaneous circuits that are required that uh, between these two uh, parts is uh, what are your interfacing circuits. So, you can tell, tell that as the interfacing section. Then 
uh, whatever all these uh, different ICs uh, that um, uh, you may be using in your converter, they all have their own uh, voltage requirement. They all may be working at different different voltage levels. So, as I showed, I have shown you here this is an op amp which works at let us say plus Vs minus V. So, this can be plus 15 minus 15 or plus 12 minus 12 whatever it could be depending on the op amps that you are using and plus here also this level shifter op amp that uh, its voltage requirement and uh, this uh, V level requirement and the VDD requirement of uh, this uh, microcontroller. So, all that uh, we have uh, to obtain using different uh, uh, ICs. So, that consists of the power supply section. So, this is that power supply section that is uh, shown here. So, uh, here uh, this is a simple schematic. So, it contains only a uh, few uh, power supply ICs. Now, uh, in a large converter there may be many miscellaneous circuits in the interfacing section and uh, like you may be having logic gates uh, or uh, different uh, level shifters and buffers and they all have their own voltage requirements. So, all that has to be those voltage levels has to be created or generated by the power supply section. Now, what are the different types of ICs that are used? Uh, one is a very common one uh, which you may be familiar that is your linear regulator. So, that is basically a transistor which is operated in the active region. So, it acts like a variable resistor in, in, a, in if we have to explain in very simple words. So, you have a, a input voltage here and uh, then you have got an output regulated voltage depending on whatever the output voltage that you require like 5 volt, 3.3 volt, 15 volt or 8 volt whatever is the voltage requirement that may be there and with respect to the reference of the controller usually. So, this is the reference that is shown here. So, that is a linear regulator and this is a picture of a linear regulator that is uh, shown over here. Apart uh, from that uh, these days uh, we get uh, DC to DC converter ICs also. That means, in one IC the case an entire DC to DC converter that is present. So, you can have uh, sometimes buck converter boost or um, other converters as well simple very DC to DC converters for uh, small power ratings uh, which you can use to uh, obtain the different voltage levels that you require. And uh, some of uh, those converters are also providing isolation that means those are isolated DC to DC converter uh, inside one integrated circuit that means one IC that you can buy that can be an isolated DC to DC converter. So, those can be then also be used for your gate drive circuits. So, that is what uh, is one diagram which is uh, shown here. Uh, for uh, this IC by Texas Instruments. So, here uh, you see here this is the input voltage that is provided uh, here that is a different uh, level that is going to be then what is the output that you uh, uh, would like to get. And uh, then some clock pulses um, can also be provided and enable pulses can also be given uh, with the help of the uh, DSP or the microcontroller and uh, it is a isolated DC to DC converter uh, that is inside this IC. Uh, isolated, non-isolated both types of uh, DC to DC converter ICs are available these days. So, you can also use those uh, in inside your power supply section to obtain different different voltage levels that are required by the various types of circuits in uh, your different sections. Then further what is there is your cooling section that comprises of your heat sinks, fans or uh, if you have liquid cooling then the cold plates and whatever the, uh, the cooling arrangement further the accessories that are required for the cooling. So, that is your cooling section that will be there in your converter and uh, plus you will be having the EMI filter section 
um, uh, for uh, reducing your conducted EMI. Apart from that, uh, we should you should also keep in mind of the enclosure. Now, uh, this I have uh, noted it down as a separate section because enclosure uh, design also um, uh, one has to think of uh, uh, enclosure affects a lot your thermal performance as well as your uh, EMI performance of your converter. Uh, these um, vents that you see here over here they are uh, they not only help in cooling they also change the radiated EMI performance. So, uh, in this course we are not discussing enclosure design, but know that uh, that also affects the overall performance of the converter and you should have it in your mind while designing the converter. So, different types of enclosures uh, may be designed for a particular power converter. So, the key points of uh, this lecture are that there are different sections in uh, power converters. And uh, um, you can have all these all of these different sections in one PCB or you can have it in multiple PCBs. It depends on the complexity of your power electronic circuit and how big or small your converter is going to be. And various electronic circuits are used. It is not just the power electronic circuit. It is power electronic circuit is the, is the heart of it, the main heart of the power converter. Apart from that you have sensors, you have uh, controllers, you have various interfacing circuits, you may have different logic circuits. So, may, miscellaneous circuits may be present. So, you should also have knowledge of uh, uh, simple analog uh, electronics and uh, uh, digital logic circuits for designing your converter. So, uh, and uh, you can also choose to uh, have digital control or analog control. Analog control is used when we have very high switching frequencies um, and uh, uh, the application is uh, less is uh, simpler uh, where the control is not too complex, where control is complex you have many things to control and the switching frequencies are relatively lesser there we go for digital control. Thank you.